The main reason I started this channel was because I love film, and whilst I've had a great time diving into the cinematography of some of my favourites over the past year, I've never really had a chance to talk about the films I watch, as I watch a film every single day. So this is going to be a new series on my channel where on the first week of each month, I look at my favourite films from the previous month, as if I was to go through all of them, it would be a 30 minutes long video. However, if you do want to see what I decide to watch each day, then you can always follow my letterbox linked below. Serious background. He was like the Gen X Great Gatsby. No one had ever spent that much money that fast. I won't spend too much on this one since it probably doesn't interest 99% of you, but Sour Grapes is one of my favourite documentaries that I've seen in the past few months. Simply put, it's about a guy who scams people out of tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in exchange for fake wines. It's a great watch if you're into wine or just crime documentaries in general. I think it's really great to like support females, particularly um, female entrepreneurs. Cool. In the future. <laughs> Great. If you're watching this video for inspiration on what to watch next, look no further than Shiva Baby. It's awkward, stressful, and was one of the most enjoyable films I watched this month. The story revolves around Danielle, a college student who has to attend a family gathering, but ends up face to face with her sugar daddy and his family. There's just something about films that I can barely relate to, but that are realistic, that allow me to completely absorb myself in the story, and Emma Seligman's Shiva Baby is exactly that. It's also just 80 minutes long. What are you doing in Paris? I'll take it. Personal Shopper is about a personal shopper, who is refusing to leave Paris until she makes contact with her twin brother, whom had formerly died there. Her life and the film then become more complicated when she gets a curious text. As far as thrillers go, this has to be one of the most unique I've seen, and sure that may just be because it's set in Paris and not New York or in the middle of nowhere, but the pacing is just unlike anything I've seen in a thriller before. Scenes are allowed to play out, and it just mesmerises you. There's also some incredible cinematography by Yorick Lasor. I had the craziest dream last night about a girl who was turned into a swan. I've been meaning to watch Black Swan for at least four years now, and in all that time I'd never realised this was a thriller slash horror slash drama, and not just a drama like I'd imagined. But anyway, it's incredible. The story, the acting, the cinematography, it all just fits together so perfectly, and easily makes for one of the most satisfying thrillers I've ever seen. If you haven't heard of Black Swan before, it's the story of a ballerina who gets the chance to play the white swan, but at the possibility of being expelled from the role, she slowly slips into madness. I figured if um, I never learned how to cook, then I would never become a housewife. Black Bear is without a doubt one of the most inventive black comedy slash thriller films I've ever seen but I can't really say anything as that might spoil it. I can say it's the perfect film for aspiring filmmakers though, and paired with a stunning location and a brilliant cast, always nice to see Aubrey Plaza in a more dramatic role, makes for an unbelievably enjoyable watch. Dearest, there are no accidents, and everything comes full circle. I wanted to watch Carol in theatres in December, but the timing just didn't work out, which is such a disappointment because this is one of the most incredible Christmas films I've ever seen. Even with a simple premise of a younger woman falling for an old married woman, it manages to steal your eyes and you feel engrossed in the 1950s world. This film is just such a welcoming change from the classic yet generic Christmas films like Home Alone, Scrooged or Die Hard and I can't wait to watch it for years to come. You want to keep things on an even keel, I guess is what I'm saying. You want to go with the flow. The sea refuses no river. You can't go wrong with Richard Linklater. At least, I can't. Most of his films create some of the most inviting atmospheres I've ever had the pleasure of watching. And sure, whilst something like Last Flag Flying or Fast Food Nation aren't that enticing, they're still really authentic experiences and waking life is no different. Showing the meaning of life is impossible, let alone trying to show it in film, but the discussions we see throughout and the relationships we see just make it impossible to turn away. 
It also has one of the most extraordinary animation styles in a film. It works so unbelievably well and makes these lucid dreams come to life. When he was a little boy, we used to play a game at the fabric shop in town. He'd go off and hide in all the big, tall rolls of fabric, and then I'd try and find it. On the other end of the spectrum, we have possibly the most heartbreaking film of the year, and it's Nitram. I mean, where do you even begin with a film like this? Since I really don't want to touch on the story, I'll just say it's an utterly heartbreaking portrayal of a hateful person, but I don't think anyone could have done a better job than Caleb Landry Jones. He gives such a raw and frightening portrayal, and it really makes you think that you are watching a psychopath. Don't get me wrong, it was absolutely incredible, but I never want to watch it again. But tonight is the night that my beautiful creature is destined to be born! It's taken me way too long to get around to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but at least I know now I'll be watching this film probably for the rest of my life. I'm sure you've all seen it, but just in case, it's a musical slash horror surrounding eccentric characters in a castle with some of them having the best time of their lives. I really don't know how you couldn't have fun watching this film. The cast feel like they were born to play their characters, the soundtrack slash score is one of the best ever, and it has an incredibly engaging story. Oh, and it has possibly the best debut performance ever, with Tim Curry as Dr. Frank N. Furter. If my English teacher is the only friend I make today, that would be sort of depressing. I'm not really surprised I liked this film. I mean, going into it, I wasn't sure what to expect. But even by just looking at the cast and the fact that the director wrote the book, you know it's going to be at least enjoyable. Out of all of the films on this list, I think I enjoyed this one the most. It's easy to watch with enough tense moments to make it engaging, has the perfect character balance between Charlie and Patrick, and it's just entertaining to watch. Also, very glad I watched the Rocky Horror Picture Show the day before this. Mysterious Skin is a masterpiece, and I never want to watch it again. Before I get talking about this film, it's one that is really not for everyone, so before giving it a watch, maybe just look through Does the Dog Die? So this is a film where I really didn't know what to expect, but since it was on the front page of Mubi and I'd heard someone talk about it before, I just put it on, and I wasn't ready whatsoever. This is easily one of the most distressing films I've ever seen, and I watched Sallow a couple of years ago. Joseph Gordon-Levitt gives maybe the best performance of his career in this, and whilst he's amazing in so many other films, he just absorbs himself into this character. You know, I've been having weird dreams lately. It's so vivid and real. On to a much lighter Greg Araki film, we have Kaboom. It feels like it could just be the opposite of Mysterious Skin in every way, even though it is still slightly uncomfortable, but not for the same reasons. It's a much more fun and light-hearted film, but it still has that dark undertone. The characters are brilliant and interesting, the story is intriguing, and the film as a whole is just mesmerising. Watching this has easily cemented Greg Araki as one of my new favourite directors. And those are my favourite films that I watched this month. I feel like I've definitely branched out from what I was enjoying last year, and because of that, I've found some incredible films that I hope you all enjoy. As well as today's video, I'll also be trying to upload an extra video on some Sundays, but looking more at the films in general, or the cinematography of shorter form content, like music videos or commercials, the long form breakdowns that I do every week are here to stay though. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at some of my favourite films from January. If you have an idea for what these Sunday videos could be, then leave a comment down below. If you somehow found it helpful, a like is appreciated, and if you would like to see more videos like this, and some not like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.